Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Iraq Group PLC AGM. Throughout this presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. It can be submitted any time by the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the presentation itself. However, the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet Company dashboard. I'd also like to remind you that this presentation is being recorded. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Mark Braun, Chairman, Sean Dope, CEO, Andrea Parker, CFO, along with non-executive director, Michael Joyce. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for joining us today. I'd like to welcome you to uh, the company's annual general meeting. Um, as uh, Paul mentioned, my name is Mark Braun. I'm the uh, company chairman. Uh, I'll be chairing this meeting today. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, we appreciate you uh, taking this uh, rather strange or, or perhaps uh, not quite normal approach to um, joining us at the AGM. Um, uh, obviously, it's due to the measures introduced by the government in respect of COVID-19. Um, my normal style is not to read, but unfortunately, the formality of an AGM is such that I've got a very long document to read through just to make sure that I get it accurate. So I hope you forgive me for having my eyes on the document and uh, and reading rather than uh, perhaps doing it um, uh, through a you know, normal uh, presentation format. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to I'm going to make a start. The uh, notice of the annual general meeting was issued on the 26th of January. Uh, this year, 2021, and uh, due notice of the meeting has accordingly been issued to the company's members. The UK government has introduced certain social distancing measures aimed at controlling the spread of COVID-19. As explained in the letter from me as chairman, uh, which accompanies the notice of the annual general meeting, we're holding this annual general meeting with the minimum number of shareholders legally required to be present in order to form a quorum under the company's Articles of Association. These shareholders, uh, these shareholders are uh, each directors, officers, or employees of the company. We have a number of other shareholders in attendance at this meeting via the Investor Meet Company platform. But as it set out in the letter from me as chairman, which accompanied the notice of the annual general meeting, none of them will be able to vote on the matters to be considered at this general meeting during the meeting itself. Instead, voting has been made aware, uh, made available via the normal proxy approach. There are also a number of people attending the annual general meeting who are not members of the company, including certain of our advisors. Unless anyone has objections to the attendance of such members, uh, non-members, I shall continue by formally opening the meeting. The quorum uh, for this meeting is two members present in person or by proxy. Having checked the number of persons present, I declare that a quorum is present and I further declare the meeting open. Before proceeding, uh, to the business of the meeting, I'd like to remind you of the methods of voting at this meeting. Resolutions will be decided on a show of hands of the members present. Unless a poll is demanded in accordance with the articles of the association before or on the declaration of the result of the vote on a show of hands. On a show of hands, every member or corporate representative who is present either in person or by proxy has one vote. And on a poll, every member or corporate representative representing uh, in person or by proxy, has one vote for every share of which he or she is the holder. A poll may be demanded by me as chairman. At least five members or their proxy having the right to vote at the meeting. Any member or members present in person or by proxy and representing an aggregate not less than 10% of the voting rights of all members having the right to vote at the meeting. Or a member or members present in person or by proxy holding shares in the company conferring a right to vote at the meeting, being shares on which an aggregate sum has been paid up equal to or not less than 10% uh, of the total sum paid up on all the shares conferring that right. With the permission of the members present, uh, I uh, therefore propose we take uh, the notice convening the meeting as having been read. Is this agreed? We can just have uh, guys show a hand, please. Yeah, everybody's agreed. By way of reminder, questions can be submitted, submitted at any time during the annual general meeting via the Ask a Question function uh, on the Investor Meet dashboard. Uh, I'd now like to reintroduce the board. Um, you have Sean Doak, who is our Chief Executive, 
uh, Andrea Pankhurst, who's our Chief Financial Officer, Michael Joyce, who's one of our non-executive directors. He's actually the senior non-executive director. And uh, unfortunately, Rob Gilbert, who is the other non-executive director, is unable to attend today's meeting, but he does send his apologies. Before starting the formal proceedings, I would also like to read out a statement on trading during the year that was released to the market by our regulatory information service first thing this morning. Um, that statement, uh, I'll just put it up on screen for you. Um, React has continued to trade well since the period ended 30th of September 2020, with profit and cash generation continuing to be stronger than the prior year. Margins and operational efficiencies have also continued to improve. The impact of the current COVID-19 pandemic continues to be unpredictable. However, we remain well positioned to support our customers' critical requirements and have a growing pipeline of business to execute on. We remain cautiously optimistic for the remainder of the year. Our strategy remains to build a leading position across our business through organic growth and, if the right opportunities present themselves via strategic acquisitions, to support our goal of becoming the country's most trusted name in the provision of specialist cleaning, decontamination, and hygiene services. Okay. Um, so, on to um, the formal proceedings. I'd now like to start them, um, uh, the formal proceedings of the annual general meeting. So we'll proceed to vote on the resolutions which I formally propose to the meeting. The full text of each of the resolutions is set out in the notice of the meeting, a copy of which you will have received. So the first one, uh, the first resolution is to receive and adopt the company's annual accounts for the financial year ended 30th September 2020, together with the director's report and auditor's report thereon. Are there any questions from the members attending? No. Um, I now propose resolution one, the text of which has been set out in the notice convening the meeting as an ordinary resolution. All those in favour, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Uh, those against? Zero. I hold uh, 235,951,002 proxy votes in favour. I also hold 1,360 votes to be placed at the chairman's discretion, which are placed in favor of the resolution. There are 610,000 votes against and 100,000 uh, withheld. Therefore, I declare this resolution has been passed. You'll see on the screen, I've put the numbers up for those that can view the screen. The second resolution relates to the appointment of Danes LLP as auditor of the company to hold office from the conclusion of this annual general meeting until the conclusion of the next annual general meeting at which accounts are laid before the company and gives the directors authority to determine their remuneration. Are there any questions? No, okay, I now propose resolution two, the text of which has been set out in the notice convening the meeting as an ordinary resolution. All those in favor, please raise their hands. Four in favor, and those against, none. I hold 235,000, uh, sorry, 235,951,002 proxy votes in favor. I also hold 1,360 votes uh, to be placed at the chairman's discretion, which are placed in favor of the resolution. 610, thousand votes against and 100,000 votes have been withheld. I therefore declare that this resolution has been passed. We now move on to um, resolutions three to six inclusive concerning the re-election of me, Sean Doak, Andrew Pankhurst and Michael jo uh, Joyce, each of whom is retiring in accordance with the Articles Association and being eligible is offering themselves for re-election at this general meeting. The board is recommending that each of the retiring directors be reselected as a director. Each resolution will be put to the meeting separately. Are there any questions? No, then um, as this, re this next resolution relates to my own election, I'll now hand over the chair to Michael Joyce, 
um, to take you through that resolution. Thank you, Mark. I now propose resolution three for the election of Mark Brond, the text of which has been set out in the notice convening the meeting as an ordinary resolution. All those in favour, please raise their hands. All those against? I counted five, four, sorry. All those against? I count zero against. I hold 235,924,142 proxy votes in favour, with zero votes at the Chairman's discretion, and 636, 860 volts against, with 100,000 withheld. Therefore, I declare that the resolution has been passed. And with that, I'll hand you back to Mark. Thank you, Michael. Um, just one correction there. There were 1,360 1, votes at the chairman's discretion. Um, but obviously, as chairman, I'm choosing not to uh, not to vote for myself using those. Um, but um, anyhow, so um, moving on, just put the result up for the next one. Um, so I now propose resolution four for the re-election of Sean Doak, the text of which has been set out in the notice convening of the meeting as an ordinary resolution. All those in favor, please raise their hands. Okay, I count five. Um, all those against, there is zero. I hold um, 235,924,142 proxy votes in favour. There are also 1,360 votes at the chairman's discretion, 636,860 against and 100,000 withheld. I therefore declare this resolution has been passed. I now propose resolution five for the election of Andrea Pankhurst, the text of which has been set out in the notice convening of the meeting as an ordinary resolution. All those in favour, please raise their hands. That's five. Those against? Zero. I hold 235,924,142 proxy votes in favour. Um, uh, 1,360 uh, votes at Chairman's discretion, which are um, voted in favour, 636,860 against and 100,000 withheld. I declare that this resolution has also been passed. I now propose Resolution 6, the re-election of Michael Joyce, the text of which has been set out in the notice convening the meeting as an ordinary resolution. All those in favour, please raise their hands. I count that as um, four, five, sorry, five. Um, all those against, zero. I hold uh, 235,951,002 proxy votes in favor. Uh, 1,360 at the chairman's discretion, 610,000 against and 100,000 withheld. I therefore declare that this resolution has also been passed. Okay, now we move on to uh, resolution seven, which relates to the authority to allot shares and grant rights to subscribe for, for or to convert any security into shares of the company. Before the directors are able to issue shares or convert any security into shares, they must first authorize, be authorized by shareholders to do so. The maximum number of shares that may be allotted under this authority is limited to an aggregate nominal amount of 249,254 pounds being approximately 20% of the nominal value of the company's issued ordinary share capital, excluding treasury shares, as at 25th of January 2021. The authority will expire at close of business on the date falling 18 months after the date of the passing of this resolution, or if earlier, at the end of the next year's annual general meeting. Are there any questions? No, okay, so I propose resolution seven, the text of which has been set out in the notice convening the meeting as an ordinary resolution. All those in favor, please raise their hands. I count five, all those against is zero. I hold 
3,615 proxy votes in favour. 1,360 uh, votes are at the chairman's discretion, which are placed in favour. 610,000 are against, and 127,387 are withheld. I therefore uh, declare this resolution has also been passed. The final resolution will give the director's authority to allot equity securities for cash without first offering them to existing shareholders in proportion to their existing holding of shares. This authority shall be limited to one, the allotment of equity securities in connection with a rights issue or other preemptive offer, or two, otherwise the allotment of equity securities of sale of treasury shares to any person up to an aggregate nominal value of £124,627, representing approximately 10% of the nominal value of the company's issued ordinary share capital, excluding treasury shares as at 25th of January 2021. The authority will expire at the close of business on the date falling 18 months after the date of the passing of this resolution, or if earlier, at the end of next year's annual general meeting. Are there any questions? No, I now propose resolution eight, the text of which has been set out in the notes convening the meeting as a special resolution. All those in favor, please raise your hands. I count five and those against, zero. I, um, I hold 235,369,533 proxy votes in favor, 1,360 votes at the chairman's discretion, which are also placed in favor, 614,800 against, and 676,669 are withheld. I therefore declare that this resolution has also been passed. That concludes the formal proceedings of the meeting, and accordingly I now declare this annual general meeting of the company closed. The results of the meeting will be announced to the market through our regulatory information service and posted on our website as soon as practicable. Thank you very much for attending. I now hand back to Paul um, and uh, and the team at um, Investor Meet. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you, Sean, Andrea, and Michael as well. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do submit uh, your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, simply type your question and press send, and we'll just keep that open just to see your questions come through. Um, but in the meantime, I'd like to remind you that recording this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your Investor Meet Company dashboard on the Investor Meet Company platform. Um, Mark, perhaps if I could just suggest that we give it a few minutes just to let investors type in their yeah. questions. If you have any, we'll keep that open. Um, and if it uh, remains as we are, perhaps we'll just ask you for a few final words to wrap up and redirect investors for feedback. Yeah, we would welcome any further questions. Uh, I think, though, you know, many of the people attending have probably met the team in the last two or three weeks. We've um, we've had two events. Uh, obviously, uh, the announcement of results on, on this platform, and we also attended the Mellow event. Um, and we've had some quite exhaustive um, questions, um, which we've um, not only answered on the platforms, but we've also published full answers to on this platform and on Mellows. But we're very, very happy to answer any other questions. I can see one's come in. Um, I just wait for to see if there are any others. Let me let me start by asking the question that's here, um, and it's it's one for for Sean and Andrea. It's from David B. It says, how do spillages and accidents translate into recurring revenue for React? Uh, I think this is something that you've actually tackled before, Andrew, in terms of the nature of our contracts. They're exclusive and we have trends associated with, with the unfortunate things that happen in, in some of our customers. Okay, so uh, for our um, contract uh, reactive customers, uh, we provide a, a service where they can call on us when they, where they have an emergency. So we have a defined SLA and pricing with them, uh, and they, they'll call us out as needed. So, um, you know, that, that revenue is recurring because they, they, they call us out multiple times over a time period. Um, whenever they have a spillage or other cleaning that they need to be done. Is there anything else you want yeah, to add thank to that, Sean? Um, on, only that, you know, what you said is quite right, but only that 
those opportunities and those framework agreements that we have often lead to bigger opportunities downstream, which some of which are recurring in nature also. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the the core of this question really is, you know, if you're on call out, you know, how does that translate to recurring revenue? I think the answer is that these contracts are quite large. They cover a multiple of uh, of sites in the in the uh, on the highways, in the railway, in the health service, um, in the judiciary, and yeah. notwithstanding um, you know COVID, which obviously has um, put some some negative effects on that as well as positive. Um, there is a there's a constant trend. Unfortunately, you know, most cells need cleaning on a regular basis. Um, you know, unfortunately. Uh, there are animal strikes on the railway and there are, uh, unfortunately, um, other fatalities on the railway that just happen on too regular a basis. And um, therefore, we can see the trend of these contracts and what they're roughly worth uh, on an ongoing basis. And they vary fairly little y- year on year because of the size and nature and they are long term. So in our view, we, we view this as one, once we've got that contract, it's an exclusive contract and the revenue is going to be recurring. Um, it may differ from year to year, but but relatively modestly. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's the key mark that we this is an exclusive agreement. You know, we're not one of three or four or five. We are the go-to company for this kind of work. So as you said, you know, we can we've got visibility to to a degree of what it looks like month on month. Yeah. Okay, we've got another question up here from William W. William, I may need you just to clarify this, but I'll read it as it is. Profits, cash generation, and margins are all good news. Thank you. Um, any chance of giving year-on-year figures? Now, we did give figures at the last two presentations. Um, Andrea, I don't suppose you've got the, the, the data in front of you so you can cover the, just the top line yeah. numbers year-to-year. Yeah, I do have a few in front of me, actually. So, um, year on year, so just from 2018 to 2019 to this year, we've just reported on, uh, revenue was up 41%. um, And of that revenue, 80% of it is recurring in in one way or another. Our gross profit was up by 64% year on year. um, And our margin is now just over 33%. Um, in the last two years, in fact, so just looking back yet uh, another year, uh, we've more than doubled our gross profit and we've increased our gross margin by just over 50%. Um, so, and then our cash balance at the end of this year was 1.8 million. Uh, obviously, of that, uh, the placing had quite a significant impact. It had a, a net impact of 1.1 million. But even excluding that, we've got uh, a net increase year on year of £300,000. So I hope that those are the key figures and those are the ones you were looking for. Yeah, and and, um, just to say, it's the first time we've actually generated cash as a company. First time we've generated a profit as a company is is this year. Hopefully that answers that question for you, uh, William. Um, I don't see any other questions having come up. Hopefully everybody has... um, exhausted their questions and we've answered them for you um if not you know you, you do know how to contact us ah here we go hang on um william i meant 2021 versus 1920 revenue okay so what you're looking at is forecast the forecast is available via our um via our uh, broker allenby uh, it is online and, and available to everybody um from memory and, and somebody's got to correct me if i'm wrong uh, I, I think we're. I think they are forecasting us on revenue at five point something million. Can you remind me? Is it five point four or five point one? Five million. It's an eighteen percent uh, growth yeah, year on year that we're forecasting on revenue, and we're forecasting to more than double our EBITDA. That's it. So that's yeah, it. yeah. So, so five point one million of revenue with an EBITDA they're forecasting at five hundred and fifty k. Of that order, so it's beginning yeah. to demonstrate the um, you know the the the, uh, the operational gearing that's available to the company as we add more revenue. But we we tend to focus a lot on the gross profit contribution um, because revenue can often you know sort of um, you know be uh, misleading. I think gross profit contribution is key for us, and this is how we incentivize and measure everybody. That's why you've seen us. Um, you know, uh, improve our margins over the last couple of years because we're focused on value, and um, and that's what they've delivered. So 
that's the number that I think is is probably fundamental in terms of all the metrics we look at is what is our gross margin and then what's our operating margin. And obviously with the forecast we've given, we'll be taking our operating margin from what was 6% last year to hopefully um, you know, good solid double digit um, margins. Um, so uh, unless there are any other questions, I don't want to um, hold anybody up from, from their day. Um, Thank you, Mark. I think, I'm, um, I think unless there's anything else well, further coming through, if any further questions are submitted, obviously the company can review um, those questions and as Mark highlighted earlier, can publish responses where appropriate to do so. Um, Mark, just before I redirect uh, investors for some feedback, perhaps I could just ask um, you, Sean, and Andrea, the team, um, or collectively, just a, a final couple of words to wrap up, please. Yeah, I mean, I'll just summarise to say, look, the company is in is in very good health and a very good position to move forward. Uh, and uh, I think we are looking forward to continuing to be open and transparent about reporting on our progress um, in in the uh, weeks, months and, and years to come. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for spending time with us, not just now, but on previous um, presentations. And we look forward to uh, pro uh, reporting on progress next time. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the REC team for updating investors today and uh, putting your AGM online. Can I ask investors not to close the session as you'll be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback. If you've accessed this meeting from our website, the feedback page will appear in front of you. If you've accessed it via the link in the email, you'll be asked to log in and give your feedback. It takes just a couple of seconds, but it's great for the company to have an understanding of your views and expectations. On behalf of React Group PLC, we thank you very much for attending today's AGM presentation. Thank you and good morning.